It's going to be amazing because in this video we talk about exactly what happens when Jesus returns. And when he returns, things are going to just reach an entirely new level. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The second phase of the kingdom, what exactly happens when Jesus returns. Now, in the last video, we left off with a powerful scripture that mentioned that when Jesus returns, those who follow him will have rulership over nations. And I kind of left it at a cliffhanger. I didn't talk about who the nations were. Well, in this video, that's going to be made clear. But before we can get into who the nations are that you will have rulership over based upon the scripture, we have to first understand exactly what happens when Jesus returns. And the first thing that's really going to be happening as he is returning to earth is there's going to be a battle. That's right. There's going to be a big war going on. And basically the center of the fight will be Jerusalem. Nations will be gathered to fight against Jerusalem. And we find that all over the Bible, really. But um, specifically in Zechariah 14, verse 2, it says, um, God is speaking here and he says, I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured. The houses ransacked. Even the woman will be raped. He, so it's, it's going to be terrible. Half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. And watch this. He says, then... As the nations are fighting against Jerusalem, then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on a day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. So imagine this war going on. The nations are surrounding Jerusalem, ready to attack it. And as soon as they are about to completely destroy Jerusalem, boom, Jesus comes back his armor on ready to go to battle as the king of kings the armies are going to be surrounding jerusalem jesus is going to show up to put an end to that when jesus returns number one every eye will see him revelation chapter 1 verse 7 it says look he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him and it makes sense if jesus is coming to stop this battle that is going on then we know every eye is going to see him. Also, watch this, Matthew chapter 24, verse 26. Jesus is talking about when he, what's going to happen when he returns. And he says to his followers this. He says, if anyone tells you there he is out in the wilderness, don't go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms. And don't believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Basically, Jesus is saying, if someone says to you that I've already come in secret or, oh, I'm out there or I'm here. No, you know they're lying because when I show up, it's going to be like lightning that flashes across the sky. Everybody will see it. It's going to be visible. It's going to shake the earth. Jesus clearly made this a statement because he wanted us to have no confusion about what's going to take place. And also in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, he's clarifying again what's going to happen when he returns. Number one, in verse 26, he said that when he comes, it's going to be like lightning that shows up across the sky. Every eye will see. And then in verse 20, in verse 30, he says this will happen. And he who the son of man will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. So what is that about? Okay, he lets us know that when he comes, everyone, everyone's going to see him. And then he says that when he comes, he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect. Well, what is that about? Now to really understand what he's talking about when he mentions the angels who are gonna go out and gather the elect, we have to also read what other verses in the Bible say about the return of the Lord. And specifically, 
uh, the Apostle Paul really addressed what will happen when Jesus comes from the sky. And it clarifies everything. In 1 Corinthians 15, 52, Paul wrote this. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. So, just as Jesus said, when he returns, the angels will have a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect. Paul also said that in a flash, at the last trumpet, the dead will be raised and they will all receive new bodies, immortal bodies. Now, you may have this question. You may say, OK, so when Jesus comes, all those who have died, who believe in him, will be raised from the dead and they will have new bodies. Well, yeah, it clearly says that. But you may also wonder, well, what about those who aren't dead? What about those who are believers, but they are, are alive when Jesus returns? Well, <laughs> there's an answer to every question. Paul clarifies that in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 15 through 17, when he says, According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first, like we just saw. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. So get the picture. When Jesus returns, Jesus let us know that in Matthew chapter 24, that every eye will see him. He will show up just like lightning shows up in the sky. And then he said that the angels will blow a loud trumpet call. And then Paul talks about how when that trumpet sounds, the dead believers will be raised and they will receive a new body. And then those who are alive to see all this, they also will at that point be caught up to meet the Lord in this air, in the sky. And they will be with the Lord forever as he comes back down to the earth. Remember, it said that in Zechariah, when the Lord returns, he will then go out to fight those nations and his feet will touch and stand on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. So it's clear when Jesus returns, the first thing he's going to do is have this family reunion. All who are believers will receive new bodies. They will meet him in the air. And then we will come on the earth with him to stop the war that's going on, which is, the, is famously referred to as the War of Armageddon. So. Once Jesus comes down to earth, then what happens? Well, uh, the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 19 and 20, they describe that battle of Armageddon. And basically, the battle of Armageddon is when the Antichrist, who you probably know is referred to as the beast, he's going to lead these armies to attack Jerusalem. Jesus is going to show up and he's going to put an end to all of this. And the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 3, says this. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who was called the devil, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. So when Jesus returns to the earth, Satan, working through the Antichrist, will be making the nations try to fight Jerusalem. Jesus is going to come, put an end to that, and he's going to capture Satan. And he's going to lock it away in prison for how long? For 1,000 years. So, think about that. When Jesus comes, he's going to take Satan, who is the one who creates all evil, basically, and lock him up for a thousand years. Well, then what happens? <laughs> well, in Revelation chapter 20, verses four and five, they des it describes how during that time when Satan is locked up for a thousand years, Jesus will rule on the earth for a thousand years. 
and there will be others who rule on earth with him. Okay, so, you know, Jesus will be the king of kings. He, he will have the only government on earth. There will not be the American democracy or the prime ministry of this location. Basically, when Jesus comes to earth, his government, his kingdom will be the only form of rule for 1,000 years. Satan will be locked up in prison and there will be others who will be ruling as kings with him. So who will those people be? Who will be the ones ruling with him? Well, like I said, every question has an answer. And that's why in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, it says, who will be the ones who will be ruling with Christ on the earth for a thousand years? It says, blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. So who are those who will rule with Christ for a thousand years? Everyone who's in the first resurrection. That's me. That's you. That's us. You see, the first resurrection happens when Jesus returns. The Bible clearly says that when he returns, there, the first resurrection happens. First, when the dead are raised and then we who are alive and remain, we too will be raised or resurrected with new bodies as we meet the Lord in the sky. That's the first resurrection. So all of us who are believers in this life, we will be in the first resurrection, which means that when Jesus returns to earth to rule for a thousand years, we will be ruling with him. We will be reigning on the earth with him. This is why in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 26, it says, To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. You will be ruling over nations. And again, he says in Revelation, chapter 3, verse 21, To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. He's saying, look, in this kingdom, since you are a son of God and a child of God like me, you too will receive a throne. If you believe in Christ in this life and you have accepted him in your heart and you have submitted to his kingship as a citizen, you will then be able, when he returns, to rule in his kingdom as a king on a throne for 1,000 years. That's, that's, that's deep, okay? And you may say, well, how will I let, live for 1,000 years? Well, that's the reason why before you begin your rulership, you have to have a new body so you can be immortal. Man, this stuff, it, it keeps getting, I love it. So, We've hit the net. We've uh, reached the point that we read in the last video, which I highly re recommend that you watch. If we're going to be ruling over nations, obviously we're not going to be ruling each other. What kind of kingdom would that be if I was a king and you were a king and I was ruling over you? That wouldn't that wouldn't work. So it says we're going to be ruling over nations for a thousand years. Well, who will those nations be? See, sometimes to really understand prophecy, you have to look Beyond just the New Testament, you got to study the prophets in the Old Testament and they really break things down. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. It's going to let you know the nations that we will be ruling. So, okay. Then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Festival of Tabernacles. Verse 17, if any of the people of earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they won't have any rain. Wow. The book of Zechariah, uh, chapter 14 here, paints this picture of, you know, the nations are going to be a attacking Jerusalem. The Lord is going to come out, put an end to that. He's going to reign on earth for a thousand years. And then the survivors from those nations that were attacking Jerusalem, 
they will have to now. That, I mean, Jesus is not going to just come and kill everybody. He's not going to come and just destroy the entire earth. No, he's going to come and put and bring order to the earth. He's going to throw Satan away in prison, but he's not going to just kill everyone. He's going to allow people to live on earth, but under his government. So the nations that he will be ruling, that you will be ruling, will be those nations who obviously were not in the kingdom. They obviously did not know Jesus. They obviously were not resurrected in new bodies. And he says that the survivors of those nations will have to submit to the kingdom of God. And honestly, you know, if you are on earth and you live in a one world government ruled by Jesus, it's not going to be a bad situation. That's going to be awesome. He's the king of kings. So think about this. You're going to be ruling with Christ for a thousand years over the nations that were not in the first resurrection, over the nations that existed when, when Jesus returns who didn't know him. This is why we have to preach the gospel. You see, when Jesus returns, he's not going to just burn the whole earth up. He will eventually, but not at that point. First, he's going to rule over the world for a thousand years. And so will you. Man, this is a great promise, and so many people don't even know about it. You know, when I think about the fact that one day Jesus is going to return, and there's going to be a kingdom that we are ruler that we have rulership in, and we're going to be ruling over nations who were not followers of Jesus. When you think about that, I I often think about the believers who lived this life in poverty, the believers who lived in this life who were under the lashes of a whip. Think about the slaves who worked picking cotton. They prayed to Jesus. They were just waiting to one day go home to heaven because their life on this earth was so miserable. But little did they know, many of them, that one day, God will make things right. One day, those same slaves, those same people who lived their life here as followers of Jesus, but were beaten, abused. One day, they will be raised in an immortal body. One day, they will no longer be under the lash of a whip, but they will be seated on a throne not just in heaven, but they will come back to the very earth that abused them and they will rule with Christ over nations. That's, that's a gift. That's the kingdom. You're going to be a part of that. And we have a duty to let everybody know there's going to be an epic moment in history when all of God's children ruled the earth as royalty for a thousand years in immortal bodies. Now, after those thousand years are over, the book of Revelation talks about how Satan will be released from prison and he will try to deceive the earth again. But God's going to deliberately release him because, you know, if Jesus is on the earth ruling as a as king of kings before the great judgment day. God's going to test people one last time to just make to just see who is all with Christ okay and Satan's going to come out and try to deceive people I don't know exactly how he's going to do it but he's going to try to deceive people and it says that they are going to try to overthrow the kingdom of God which is I don't know how they think they can do that and then the earth will be destroyed um, it talks about in the book of Revelation and then you will have the great judgment day and then all of those who are followers of God, who are in God's kingdom, will live forever on a new earth, a, in a new universe, in new, with new heavens. And everybody in existence will be God's children, those who follow him. Now, that is another video right there. We will go into detail about that in the future. But we have a lot to look forward to. And a big part of the kingdom is understanding that we are citizens of the kingdom now. And, you know, if we submit to God's kingdom now, you know, that right there prepares you to one day being able to rule in the kingdom 
when Jesus returns. So the kingdom of God is amazing. And next video, we will talk about something that I know many of you are curious about. You know, the Bible talks about we're going to have a new body when Jesus returns. So what will it be like? We know it's going to be immortal, but what will the features be? What will it be able to do? Well, there's a lot of things in the scripture that talk about that. So we're going to break it down. We're going to break down exactly what the new resurrection body will be like. And it's going to be an eye opening video. And I hope you like it. I hope you watch this video again because there's a lot of stuff in this that you probably just can't get the first time. And I hope you share this video. Let people know about it. If you are a member of church or, or some community, let people see what is going on and Thank you again for tuning in. Um, of course, if you have comments, please express how you feel because you know we love to have this kind of conversation going where we can all talk about God's kingdom. It's awesome. And also, email me at jared at aocnet.org and I will send you the link so that you can see our writing materials that break a lot of these themes down so you can just be a step ahead of the game before a video is released. God bless you and look forward to seeing you next week.